Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. This is Kimberly with Journal Breeze and today I'm going to show you the case file that I have been working on for the Creep On June 24 from Tracy Fox Creatives. It's an incredible collaboration. It has a story that Justin wrote and it has incredible, oh my gosh there's so many, incredible gorgeous uh, digitals and then each of us that are um, hosting a day which this is not my host day I'm hosting day 19 um, is assigned a page where we have a particular element could be a tag an envelope or a file folder and then there's a, another tag on the page and then there's a story element so out of this story that's Creepy, not bloody, not gory. Creepy and fun. It's very much like a normal um, paranormal investigation. Whoops, I didn't lock it. Hold on. Hold on. Oops. Okay. Um, we just get little tidbits. And we can choose to use them and incorporate them into our make or not. We can choose to use them in our journals or however you're going to keep your your makes for each day if you're playing along. It's a blast! If you aren't playing along, please, please reconsider. I will put links to the videos that will get you going. There's not that many. And um, and to the um, digitals in Love Junk Journals, which is Tracy's Etsy shop. I'm sure you know that. So let me move to my version. So. I ended up making a tall journal and I also ended up including, the, let's see, I think I'm up to day seven in this. So it's the case file which was actually done pre the collaboration starting on June 1st. Tracy gave us some great freebies that are still available and we were just getting really revved up before we even started the daily prompts. Every creator is assigned a day and it's just so inspiring. I just can't tell you. This has been so much fun. I, I'm just so involved in it and just love everybody's ideas. And there's so many pages in this digital that there's not a lot of repeats. It's amazing. So I have been doing gel printing lately and really love it. And so I had gel printed this over a piece of beige digital by Chapter One Papers. and. I thought it looked like an old leather worn cover and so rather than go with a file folder which was what a lot of the case files are being made out of I went with this and it's ended up kind of making for a different experience because obviously the pages are tall and so I have things more you know a little bit different and I'm loving it so I've stayed with it um, I have a few pages left to go at the end and I think I'll stick with that and then I will um, then I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll make another one or maybe I'll go to a regular format. I don't know. So with no further ado, let's move into the flip through. And I'll share anything that I think you might want to know how I made it. Okay? So I just stitched around this um, just to give it sort of another element. And it's just a, a single piece of paper because I honestly did not intend to use it as a cover. And then I made this. I cut out the center of a slide old metal slide or camera yeah it's a slide but it's an old metal one cut out the center of it I mean cut out it this is the center it's a big old slide it's cool digital and then I cut this out of the center of something else and I combine these two to make a sort of a you know what might go on on a male case file there's two men and a woman I should say I'm telling this story I'm adding to it, Justin. I'm I'm going deeper than what Justin is doing. In that he he does his third person, and I am acting as if I am Ernest, who's the lead investigator. So I'm putting down Ernest's thoughts, and he's a guy. So the writing is real bad, and it wasn't hard for me to do it that way. Trust me. <laughs> and I'm thinking like a man, like a like an investigator. And so people are liking it on Facebook. They're really um, enjoying it a lot. A little bit on Instagram too, but Facebook is really where it's happening. Tracy's group, Fa Tracy Fox Creatives, on Facebook. Okay. 
So, um, this is one of the freebies. Oh, that light is just, let's see if I turn it off completely. Oh, it is off completely. Okay. Turn this down. Maybe if we do that. Okay, that's better. So, this is talking about the case file number, the clients who own the house, Craftly Hall. It's the location. It's in UK somewhere. And then the attending investigators are Ernest Brundle, Carl Edwards, and Dorothy Blakely. And you'll meet them in this file in a minute. So, there's a place here for a note. And I wrote, the original settlement of the property was in 1665 decimated by the plague. In early 1700, a small church with cemetery was erected. The church collapsed. collapsed. The reverend disappeared, but the cemetery remains to this day. Now, this, was, this information was actually taken from Justin's story. So you open it up, and I've depicted what I wrote here. I had no intention of going so far into the actual collaboration, so there will be a little repeat, but then I'm just putting it in earnest words later on. So um, this was Dr. Milsan who built the Crafty Hall. And this is a map that's included in the freebie. They broke ground. It's lower Crafty. Stack a pile, a pile of papers that the investigators would have. And then um, Dr. Milsan died there. And his wife, Violet, left the next day taking nothing but her own belongings. These are the quality of the pictures in the kit. It's incredible. I mean, you could use this in a million different things. It doesn't have to just be this particular collaboration. These are very usable pictures. And then this is the property map. Here's Crafley Hall. Here's the cemetery. This is a picture of Crafley Hall. This is the couple. I said they were the next owners. They were married. Rose and Jeffrey Binder, 1920, began restoration of Crafley Hall, living downstairs in a few rooms. Again, speaking from Ernest's point of view. This is tape I made to make it look older. This is the deed I tore it apart. It's wider than that. So we have a cemetery picture here in the case file number. And when I take this out, do you see what's in the picture? There you go. Okay. So Ernest writes, The aforementioned cemetery at Crafley Hall. Do not disturb the grave sites. Note, the orb, top, middle, left side. Take caution in this area. And because I wrote this on a really old piece of paper from 1912, it has what the original owner had written about going to a symphony. So I used the picture as a belly band and then hid the ghost so that when you took it out, you'd be surprised. These are two of the investigators. These are all on the freebie. I tried to make it look older, curl the edges, that kind of thing. Made a tag over here. Oh, that might have come with the freebie. And here we have Ernest. So this is, um, he is the head of the old committee. Or, what, old? Hmm. The Committee of Physical Investigators on Devereux Street in London. So I squirted a little uh, Tim Holtz spray on there. And then this, these come in the kit. Everything in here comes in the kit. So this is a picture of the house. This is a letter that the Brindles who own the house wrote to tell the lead investigator or the, or the team or the organization really that they're having some frightening things happening and they would really like to have a visit from them to help them figure it out. This also came inside the kit. And this is another gel print I made, which to me looks like an x-ray. So I thought that was kind of a cool, cool one to pick. This is also Mr. Brundle. He's older in this picture than he is in that one. So, the, my, my writing says, 
As he does, Investigator Brundle got to work right away, investigating the grounds of Crafley Hall, the outside of the hall, and the cemetery. He enjoys photography, too. This is his studio and his camera. Here he's looking up, and what does he see? He sees these most unusual items. Oops, okay, that, that's folded. So this is an, an entrance to the cemetery. This is one of the things he's looking up to see. This is a tag. There's just so many elements to play around with. It's really a blast. And I love how everything looks super vintage. And then let's see, does this open up? Um, oh, yeah, it opens up. <laughs> I made this a while ago already. And, um, and I liked this. It's cracked mirror in the uh, conservatory. So I had that there. That's right. And then this is one of the file folders, and I glued this on the inside. It's from another piece that I ripped in half. And this is what the file folder looks like. So it's very detailed and very vintage. Really fun to play with. Okay, so I glued a piece of paper over both sides and formed a new middle because these were thin. The paper I used is newsprint. And um, I, 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 as I decided to get, you know, a little bit more chunky with my stuff, I felt like it was a little too thin. So this writing says, began researching, researching former inhabitants of the home and those in the cemetery. Plan to catalog with photos of individuals, if at all possible. Check with library, church, school, city hall, county records. So here's a cool picture of a person in a black big cloak leaving out those doors that I called were the entrance to the cemetery. This is a bag that I um, painted on the dye gel plate, I mean. Oh, this is from a, um, I was a member of the Santa Barbara Historical Society, and this was from one of their catalogs, so I'm going to fit that in somehow, cut it down and make it happen. And so these are some of the people that were former inhabitants and also in the cemetery. In some cases, this is some of that old paper I mentioned. So you will see as you watch the videos that people use these to depict different parts of the story. It's really a smorgasbord, and it's so much fun because of it. But all the colors really work together. Everything's in these yellows and grays and vintage paper colors, lots of black. Okay, there we go. Scooch down a bit. There we are. Okay, and now we're moving into um, using some of these tags. Now we're getting into the actual collaboration. This is all pre, and now we're in the days. So I, I note at the top, Ernest notes the timeline of construction of the land. This is important, of course, to the ghost investigation, which is my favorite part. Okay, this site was a settlement that was decimated by the plague in 1665. In the early 1700s, a church was built on the plot with a small cemetery. So this tag, this is the first tag on the first day. You do not have to correspond with the first day, but it's a beautiful damask. And then this, I think, was on day two. And then I put a piece of book paper underneath the whole thing. And when this comes out, it says... They, the team, were in communication with a gentleman who, who had himself been a reverend at the church, which stood on the site in the 1700s. So look at that great picture of the church. Isn't that wonderful? I did a lot of machine st stitching in this um, because I wanted it to be flat. I, I couldn't really do a lot of elements on top. So I did a lot of stitching, which kind of filled in what I might have otherwise done other types of things. And this one says, in the early spring of 1863, work began on the building of what was later to become Crafley Hall. A doctor and his wife later take residence. So this is the doctor and his wife. I write here, Ernest writes here, doctor and the missus, a June-December couple.
Cornerstone covers the history of Crafley Hall. It was built by Dr. Milsan and his wife Violet, 25 years his junior, but taller than the doctor. They were happily married and looking forward to his retirement. They built their dream house to live out their life together. The doctor was heartened that his wife would have a home. She loved and decorated herself to live in after he was gone from this earth. He enjoyed renovating the outbuildings while she worked on the inside. A large lot it was. And you remember all the pictures of the property. And Too soon, Ernest thinks to himself, tragedy strikes the Mel Sands. In the spring of 1864, the doctor is killed in one of the outbuildings. You pull this up. And it's a picture of the outbuilding. And then I put a picture of the doctor as he's crossed over to the other side, standing on the property. But if you look real close, you'll also see a ghost there in the window of the outbuilding. And when you take it out, here it reads, Violet was devastated, shocked, and numb. And she left for good the next day, never returning. This is another one of my die cut or die gel prints. I'm so unused to saying the word. One of my gel prints that I felt looked very ghostly. Very ghostly. I think you can see orbs and ghosts. And so that became, I don't want to cover it up. So down here we have one of the file folders. It's called an extra. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Just put, you know, walnut around the edges. And then you open it up and you get this cool... This, to have the hand come out of the picture, was Tracy's idea in day one video for the collaboration. This is the key to the house. This is one of the frames in the kit. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a piece of acetate over this that I've really scr scratched up with sandpaper and aged. Put a lot of distress on there. So, and then this, of course, was the... Um, picture of the house that I've showed you before underneath and this is in the kit they think a convict was around the areas who had lost a finger that's part of the story and then unsolved those are they come in the kit more of the ghostly paper and now I think this is the last of what I'm going to show you today um, oh again if you can see it I have Faux mica that I made with tape. Tracy has a video on that recently. Faux mica. And then this is done with acetate. Again, there. this is scratched up and colored. This is as is. You just yank it around when you pull it out to get it to be. And then you put it on top of itself. That was basically how it was done. And this is a picture of the binders. And the binders signed their deed. This is a wax seal that I made. That's them. Good journaling spot. Another good journaling spot. This is a, another freebie. It came with the day one video. Key to the house and another uh, gel print page I made. And then um, Craftly Hall, Lower Craftly. Who currently lives there? Rose and Jeffrey Binder. Rose's cousin, Alice Jensen. Various house pets, one horse. Okay. <laughs> I just make up a lot of stuff. But again, Justin's kind of leading the way. And I'm just you know, adding things for interest in, and making it a little more personal and adding things for humor now and again, like the horse and the pets. So that's it. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope if you're not already part of it, this has inspired you to participate. It's super fun. It doesn't matter what you do. It's going to be loved. And you could just do a number of things. Tracy's actually um, showed how to make a special box that you put each day's make in rather than making a journal. But a lot of people are making journals. So whatever you want to do, it's just really fun. And it goes on for the whole month. And other than buying the, um, the kits themselves, there's no cost at all. And it's just amazing. So thank you again. I hope I'll see you on... June 19th, which is my day to share my my make. I actually have two makes for you that day. And 
Um, if you have any questions or, or anything at all, please don't hesitate to leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I love, I love connecting through comments. I'll definitely read it and get back to you. And I look forward to seeing what you make. Take care, everybody. Karibon, June 24.